In the last 20 years, Toyota sold 26 lakh Innovas in India, making Toyota a household brand. Continuing this journey forward is the all-new Innova High Cross. And it's arrived in a brand new avatar claiming to be a big step up over the Innova Cresta. But does it have enough in its arsenal to take that legacy forward? Well, let's find out. But before we do that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. So you're notified whenever Karan Bike uploads a new video. How strikingly different the new Innova High Cross is? Well, that's evident right in its appearance. Since its debut in 2005, the word Innova has been synonymous with an MPV styling. But in its third generation, the designers have moved away from it and adopted a more crossover or an SUV styling element. And that is very much evident with how the car looks now. At the front, you get the Hilux inspired honeycomb mesh grille, which has ample amount of chrome given to it to highlight its SUV presence as well as its dominance on the road. Proudly sitting at the center is the Toyota badge as well as Innova lettering on the front section that is predominantly uh, made in chrome. Apart from that, lower down you get a thick uh, bumper cladding which also has silver elements and also uh, supports the SUV dominance that the car is going for. Apart from that, you get LED treatment for the headlamps as well as for the DRLs. Now, the wheels are 18 inches but what we would have liked is probably a more chunkier set of wheels because right now the distance between the wheel arches and the wheels looks enormous probably practicality wise it might differ that we'll probably get to it when we drive the car but right now design wise it looks a bit odd and we would have probably liked chunkier wheels moving further down the silhouette remains largely identical to the innova crista you obviously get the hybrid uh, lettering here denoting the strong hybrid version of the car. In fact, the rear looks much like the new Land Cruiser. Identifiable, very sexy. The design lines bulging over the rear fenders and that shape of the tail lamps, all of it attracts our attention. Look at it from a distance and the car maintains the MPV charm that the Innova is known for. Even the dimensions reflect that, but Toyota says that it has managed to liberate ample space for the passengers inside, thanks to the new modular TNGAC platform. It is marginally wider and longer for sure, but the real difference is in the wheelbase and it is better by 100mm compared to the Krista. But what does this mean to the passengers inside? While Prateek was checking out the design, Shubham got busy with the cabin. So this is the seat most of the owners will prefer to be on and let me tell you it has come a long way in terms of comfort. Let's start with the seat first. So it's quite accommodating and you have got ample amount of knee room here so even taller passengers won't face an issue though headroom for them will be a bit challenged because you know on bumps and all you have that fear to brush your head against them now in terms of sense of space thanks to this large panoramic sunroof the cabin feels quite airy you have got ambient lighting options also here and the seat themselves are quite well bolstered it has got just the right amount of cushioning not too soft not too hard they also have well-measured scooping in the backrest offering good lumbar support. And the only thing we miss having is ventilation for the rear seat as well. It would have completed the boss seat package. What will simply allure buyers here is the generous recline angle these captain seats have. These are power adjustable and go all the way back to the third row. You also get power foldable footrests which go up to 90 degrees and you can literally lounge in on these seats. In fact, there are enough practical features keeping the atmosphere cozy. In terms of features now, you have got dual zone climate control, so separate climate control functions here. You have got type C charging ports, two type C charging ports here and the central console has cup holders. You have got dedicated space for your phone, for your tablets and this can be tumbled down and give you easy access to the third row for you know for the quick access. Now in terms of overall feel, the cabin feels quite good. 
you have got these sun blinds also the material used are plush and you have got the soft touch material on the armrest as well so you know overall it's a good cabin to be in and good for longer commutes and when there are more people on board the middle row seats have more than ample back and forth roller adjustment creating more room for third row passengers just that second row passengers won't be able to slide their foot under the front row seats because of the floor mounted battery pack but you can always use it as a footrest and with that done let's take a feel of the third row so the second row seats don't tumble down but it has got just about enough cavity for easy ingress the seats though take quite some time to adjust and recline but once you're here in the third row you have got just enough knee room and under thigh support to be comfortable in a shorter commute so two adults won't find an issue but three children will be quite comfortable here there is ample space for children and even for longer commutes they won't find any issue while adults do sit a bit knees up the slightly lowered floor height makes things convenient a bigger quarter glass would have gone a long way giving a better sense of room area but the biggest highlight is that all third row passengers get proper three point seat belts even the middle one which means three point seat belts for all passengers in the cabin then there are practical features like dedicated cup holders phone storage space and aircon vents but only one 12 volt charging point So certainly there was room for more to be done here. There are 6 airbags on offer including front and curtain airbags but no airbags for third row passengers. Hmm. Talking about utility it offers impressive boot space of over 300 liters with all seats up. Folding the third row seats would open up a massive 991 liters of cargo volume enough for your house moving duties and the boot is easily accessed thanks to the not so high loading lip despite the 185 mm ground clearance so the last two rows have certainly impressed us let's see what prateek has to say about the first row Now if you've heard Shobham raving about the second and the third row Toyota has made sure that even the first row passengers are pampered to the full. So you get a lot of features for the front row passengers as well but the main feature that you get are ventilated seats for both the front and the co-passenger. You also get electronically adjustable seats for the driver but the centerpiece of the front row is this 10.1 inch infotainment system. Now it is smooth the user interface is quite smooth and it's not that laggy but we haven't got enough time to spend with it so we can't exactly tell you if there are any flaws but apart from that it works really fine it's obviously an upgrade from the older model of the Innova Crysta so this is a very good addition that Toyota has given to the Hycross now moving below you get an island layout for the center console with your gear lever taking precedence besides that you get different kinds of functionalities you get a uh, whole brake as well and different kinds of drive mode as well as your ev mode uh, you get a nice recess over here to keep your phone or any other tidbits that you want but in the zxo version you do get wireless charger pad over here so that's a plus that the innova hycross offers apart from this there are ample amount of storage space at the center console as well as inside the center armrest The Innova Hycross has managed to impress both Shubham and Pratik with its sheer luxury. But how is it to drive? Let's find out. The car comes with two power trains, a 2-liter naturally aspirated petrol engine paired to a CVT unit delivering 172 brake horsepower and 205 Newton meters of peak torque. And the other one is what we got to drive today a 2 liter engine coupled to an electric motor or a self charging hybrid powertrain as toyota calls it a combined output of 184 bhp and 206 newton meters catapults the car from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in a claimed time of 9.5 seconds that's quick for a car this size Now first off when you put the gas to the metal 
the flow of power is extremely smooth and seamless in this hybrid powertrain and that's because we were instantly greeted with the EV mode which basically runs on the electric motors and the battery and that's very surprising for us because we've never thought of the Innova to be so silent to be so smooth and to have like almost no sound sweeping in into the cabin no more vibrations or rough sound from the engine as all are silenced in this newer improved Innova High Cross and different modes to alter the output makes it even more fun now if EV mode is not what you prefer then you can obviously always change the drive modes power mode is something that we found to be extremely uh, easy to drive in the city as well as on the highway and if you want extra power to take that quick overtake then just gun for it and the petrol engine kicks in to give you instant power offering a helping hand is the new ECVT unit now there were a lot of talks about when Toyota announced that the Innova High Cross will come with an electronic CVT that did make us think about how that car is going to perform but driving it for a decent amount of time has made me realize that this combination between the engine and the gearbox is not really that bad. The steering wheel is also nice and firm, required especially for longer journeys. Tilt and telescopic adjustments definitely help. The new Toyota Innova High Cross is also the first MPV in India to come with level 2 autonomous driving systems like dynamic radar cruise control, lane trace assist, rear cross traffic alert, blind spot monitor and pre-collision system and auto high beam among others. Well that's the story from the driver's perspective. Let's see how comfortable Shubham is on the move. So the Innova Krista has set a benchmark in terms of ride quality and comfort and the High Cross takes that ahead, it builds up on it because the suspension, it has just the right amount of suppleness to it. You don't feel those potholes or sharp bumps as sharp and even on the undulations, you feel quite comfortable the car is composed. Even thanks to the new monocoque construction, you don't feel that heft under the body so it's quite comfortable there. Now in terms of overall airiness also, you have a good glass house area so you don't feel hemmed in or anything as such. As far as the ride comfort is concerned, the Innova has always been the preferred choice of wheels, especially when you are someone who prefers being driven around and the High Cross takes that up by a notch, more so with the seats. In addition to its significantly better driving dynamics and smooth performance, the claimed fuel economy of 21.1 km per litre makes a very strong case for this strong hybrid iteration of the High Cross. The High Cross does justice to the Innova moniker and has enough metal to carry that legacy forward, if not more. Only things left to desire are rear seat ventilation and airbags for the third row since the Tata Safari and Mahindra XUV700 offer either of those features. Not having them is definitely not a deal breaker though. The High Cross will be positioned above the Innova Krista and hence will be premiumly priced. We expect X showroom prices to begin from 24 lakh 80 thousand rupees for the base 2 litre naturally aspirated trim and go up to 32 lakh 50 thousand rupees for the fully loaded 2 litre strong hybrid variant. And if we look at it as an affordable alternative to the Skoda Kodiak and even the Kia Carnival, the package becomes even more compelling. <laughs>